Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about HL7 capture and parsing of messages. The way you capture a message is you find it in your log file, which is typically a notepad file, and you copy it and paste it into the parsing tool, which separates out the message into its segments and its fields. Before we had this kind of software, the way we used to do it was you would have an Excel sheet that listed all the fields. You would look at the notepad and you would write down in the Excel sheet what each field was. Now we have this tool. I'm going to use 7Edit Professional as my parsing tool. So I've highlighted text from one of our worksheets and now I'm going to paste it in. So I'm going to click File, go to Open from Clipboard. There's the message I want. I'm going to say OK. And here's my message. Here's broken down in my segments. I see that the message has an extra space, so I'm going to take that out. And now I have the properly formatted message with each of the segments. Down here it tells me that it's an ORU message. It has the message control ID, the sending and the receiver. Over here again I can see all of the segments. So I can expand the message header and click through the fields and you'll see the blue cursor keeps pace with me over here in the actual field. As I work through these, I can expand what's called the response section. Now I'm in the PID section, obviously. I can expand that. See each of those segments and those fields. I can go to the OBR and expand that and look at OBR5 or OBR3, wherever I want to go. So let me close that section. Now if I come down here and I move from the message tab to the validator tab, this will validate the message. It will tell me what problems I have. Okay, So I have a required field missing. So if I double click here, it will show me over here that this is a required field, but it's blank. There's nothing in it. So if I knew the value, I could put it in and fix that message. Here I have a field that's coded for numbers. Right? This would have the NM data type, and those are clearly not numbers. So this is a really handy tool. Obviously, there's not 11 fields under OBX, so that's another problem. This is a great way, if you don't have the best skills for taking apart messages and finding the problems, or to do it quickly, is to use a capture and parsing tool. I'm going to close this one, and then I'm going to bring in a test message. Okay, so I'm going to paste in the test message, and we'll see how the parser works with that. Now this is interesting, right? It says message version required. So what version of HL7? Oh, wait, it's not there. Okay, it doesn't contain the segment that would have the HL7 version, and you see that all of this says undefined segments. Let me see if I can fix this message. Well, I know it's going to need a field that tells us whether it's production or test. So let me put that field in. And then let me give it a version ID of 2.5. And almost as soon as I type that, you see now it changes. It says it's an ADT AL1. It's got the message control ID. You see all the fields have now populated. Also, I see that there's a problem here, all of this in gray. There's an extra space. Let me backspace that out. Okay, so now we have a proper message. I have now edited and fixed this message. I could retransmit it if I had that ability. So we can see the message header. Message header fields now are all, now it knows what format they're supposed to be in. They're all filled in. The event type. The PID. Again, I can expand these and work through each of them this way. Obviously, a capture and parse tool is a very handy tool to have when you're working with HL7 in the fast paced real world. Um, a lot of places, big hospital systems have these kind of tools now. Some places still do it with Notepad and Excel Sheet, and we're going to learn the Notepad Excel Sheet way in class and uh, when we have time individually we can come down to my office and play with the 7 edit capture and parse tool thanks for watching i'll see you in class